Good afternoon. It's August the 12th. And this is just something that I like to do from inside the house. I just love when when the figs get ready. And I can pick them right from my window. Just something I don't know. It's just something I always enjoyed doing over the years. Makes me feel good. <laughs> I just like doing it. Doesn't make much sense, I know. But the Celeste are ready. I've got some nice ones out there. I'm going to change positions in a second. I just, it's so delicious. The most underrated fig in the universe. I love my Celeste. I just love them. And if you stick with me, I'm going to show you a few varieties today that are worthy of discussion. And one of them is going to be LSU Tiger, which I have a really nice tree, which is, has a, a great abundance of fruit on it. And it's exactly, I'm trying to get this in focus, but I can see it's just not working out too good. But, um, hold on a second. I want to show the color of the Celeste, because this is a variant. Now look at that. I hear people say on YouTube how it's a sugar fig and and there's no intense flavor to it. What? Really? Look at that. I mean, that's a beautiful, beautiful fig. Look at that. Now my variants, I have several different variants and I've taken the time to gift them to several distributors. And uh, I can only tell you that, you know, not, not all C Celeste trees are equal. They're not. And there's so many variations of Celeste that we need to be aware of. So never discard a thought with, re with regard to perhaps acquiring this variety because it's just superb. It's delicious. Hold on a second. I gotta eat this. Mm. Hmm. That is, well, let me move my position here now. Some more Celeste. I've got quite a few that are, are ripe. tangled up in on that here <laughs> not for the Celeste but for another variety let's see uh, one of my favorite things to do every year is just an annual ritual is the Celeste harvest Mm. I absolutely love them. With Celeste, like many other fig varieties, the longer you let them ripen on the tree, the more delicious they are, of course. That's always the case with figs, but it seems like it's especially so with... I only have two hands. I wish I had another one here right now, but... Look at that beautiful color. Can you see that? I can't. I'm not getting good focus here. Isn't that gorgeous? I just love the color of Celeste. Look at that. Closed eye. Look how closed the eye is. Impervious practically to it. The rain and inclement weather. Mmm. Wow. That one was so good. Well, before I get all wrapped up in the Celeste, look at how nice and bright, look how beautiful, beautiful. 
I better get out of that sun there. When you, you know that all you out there when you see when you see them hanging down like that, you just know they're ready, don't you? Now when I'm finished with this video, I can tell you. <laughs> I'm gonna have a little fig fun. Well let's move over to here. wanted to talk about this variety and any of you out there that are familiar with this variety you can tell by the leaves which are definitely a reliable tell when it comes to LSU tiger these spade shaped leaves single lobe leaves quite uniformly and what a producer tiger is. Let's see if I can't move this net off here. I, but just look how beautiful these figs are. And look how heavily laden with figs this tree is everywhere you look. Now they're a nice size fig, much bigger than Celeste. As you can see, let me get my hand in there for a reference. My fingers. A lot of fruit everywhere, always. If it didn't, I would have to kick it out of my garden. <laughs> I just do not want to have any dead weight. Good rule. I've mentioned that once before. No dead weight. No dead weight. I'm going to sit down for a second here. I've had a long day. An interesting day. An eventful day. And lots of fruit. <laughs> a lot of fruit. I've been eating a lot of fruit. See, now, here I have this net on here. And you can see that there's no damaged... There are no damaged figs. And you can see that everywhere. They're all over the place and they're ripe, but nothing's fooling around with them, right? Okay, but see here where I made a mistake. I didn't close this up enough down here. And the birds, the birds got to that one. See that? So I can share. They can have a few. I don't have any problem with that. I'll sit down here for a minute. Let's see if I can pick this through here. Uh, uh. LSU Tiger. Now you see it. Good productive tree. Many people like it very much. I like it. It's not one of my top favorites, but let me see. Wait. There we go. Oh boy, boy, that's 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 a beauty. If you can see it, I can't see it. LSU Tiger. Let's take a taste. It looks good. It looks very good. Beautiful. Certainly do love my figs. Mm. Very, very good. It's a, certainly a wow. It, but it it's a top tier fig. But when I say that, it's loosely relative to the term. And what I mean is it's a good fig, but it it doesn't fall into the category of Italian 258, Smith, or even Rondi Bordeaux, certainly not Black Madeira, and a lot of other good figs. But you know what? I, I, I'm going to talk about this in a minute with regards to the Mount Etnas. I am not... <laughs> 
here we go again. For what it's worth, I love that caveat. Um, head on the chopping block. I, I just, I don't think that the Mount Etna figs, most of them, almost all of them really, are top, top tier figs either. Now, don't get me wrong about that. They are very, very good. They're tasty. And they are one of the better figs, especially in the Northeast. If you don't live in California or Arizona or some high zone, they're one of the best figs to have in your yard and certainly in ground. And I've got quite a few of them in ground. We might look at a couple today. I want to make this video quick. But as far as taste, just taste, I find them a little bit lacking. And, and I would rank this, the LSU Tiger, up there with them. And, and, and I'm not trying to... You know, I'm not trying to be too condescending towards the Mount Etna varieties. And there's so many of them. And many of them are the same. And they have the same name or different names. And, you know, let me take a taste. Of, let me taste this one. Yeah. Very good. Very refreshing. I've eaten these for several years. I know that they are the same as they were before. I've given them plenty of time. And I would recommend this tree if you have room, if you want to plant it in ground because it's so fruitful and it's so healthy. Look at it. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful tree. Want a beautiful fig tree? There you go. Got one. But for taste, uh, I, I would rather grow other varieties. But I, w I won't remove this from my collection, but I have plenty of room. Let me gobble this down. I just want to give a fair representation based on my experience. And I've have I have several of these. I have three of these in the ground, actually. Two on this property and one on another property in Virginia. So it's always the same. It's a good grower. It doesn't just shoot up a lot of branches, or I would get rid of it. It produces a lot of fruit, or I would get rid of it. They are very delicious. I say delicious, or I would get rid of it. <laughs> and I'm impressed with the cultivar, or I would get rid of it. But it's just not that satisfying as far as the taste to me. There are others that I like. Like, like, like I like my Rondi Bardot. And I keep talking about it. And here you can see a lot of ripe fruit. Hold on a second. Get my, get my hands under this net. I'm not really having any trouble with the birds. Uh, but just in case. And you see how they did get one of my my tigers. But this is Rondi Bordeaux. And it's just loaded with fruit everywhere. All over the place. And I've got another in-ground tree. This is fully in-ground. Now let's take a look inside this one real quickly. You see? See the difference? You can see how this big, big tape. I like to say that a lot in my video. You can see how good it is. And you can. And, and again, I'm not taking away too much from LSU Tiger. LSU Figs. I'm a fan of LSU Figs. But even with the LSU Purple, I find it lacking in that higher quality of taste. It's a marvelous cultivar. It grows gloriously. It's vigorous. It's disease resistant. I give it high grades. It's early. I like everything about LSU Purple. I don't have one, but my neighbor has one in Virginia. And I've posted photographs on some of the forums and so on and so forth. And I've written about it. But, and I've eaten tons of them. Uh, but I don't really prefer the taste to many of the other cultivars. And I like Celeste much better, the taste of Celeste. A well-ripened, I'll take a well-ripened Celeste, or two or three of them, because <laughs> they're a little smaller. But I'll take a well-taste, a well-taste, a well-ripened Celeste any day of the week. Excellent. I just think that this cultivar is a better cultivar. 
I want to grow a bunch of figs. I want them to taste really, really good. Mm. Delicious. Wow. I just missed a beautiful hummingbird. This is my other fairly large Rondi Bordeaux. And you can see it's just loaded with fruit everywhere. I'll show you. Look. Look at all those ripe fruit. Look at that. Perfectly ripe. Look at them. Rondi Bordeaux. I love you. Look at those beautiful fruit. Look at that. Beautiful. So many ripe ones just everywhere. Let's tear this one open. Mmm. Oh, that's good. Now, here's a fig variety. And I've mentioned it's not as winter hardy as many will, will say. I have, at least in my opinion, and I'm in 7A, where it's cold. But this has survived in the ground for at least three years or more. And so has the other one in the ground. And I have one in 7B, too, and it survived nicely. So it's winter hardy, but I can tell that it takes a beating. And our, and our last few winters have been mild. So I'm hoping that I'm going to wrap this tree very carefully, all of them. I'm going to wrap them carefully. And I have videos about wrapping, if you want to look at those videos. I very much value my Rondi Bardot figs, and so I will be wrapping them. Look at that. Oh, wow. Look at that one. Isn't that beautiful? So ripe. Mmm. And if you value your trees in 7A or 7B or colder, wrap them. Take the time to wrap them. I have videos on that subject in detail. Because it's worth the effort. And I'm going to make sure I wrap these utilizing the best knowledge that I've acquired over the years that I have at my disposal. That I promise you. And maybe I'll share that information, or that or maybe I'll make a video when I do it. I'm going to utilize the, my best technology, my best experience. Now I'll do that with all my favorite fig. Okay, I think I'll finish this video here on Black Greek Marius. It is another of the Mount Etna type, hardy Chicago type figs. And these are beautiful main crop figs that are getting ripe, quite a few of them. I won't spend too much time. That's a ripe fig. Uh, many of you out there that aren't newbies will recognize that, of course. And there's some very nice ones, nice, very ripe figs here. Beautiful. Oh, there's an even riper one down there. Let's, let's pull that one up. Look at that. Wow. Black Greek Marish. One of my favorite among the Mount Etna types. Let's open her up. Oh, that one's got a rich color. Intense red. Look at that. You can tell that that's going to taste really good. But again... They're not top, top, in my opinion, they're not top, top tier figs as far as taste. In every other way, they're good, good figs as far as taste. I, I, I want to make that clear. There are just better ones out there that I like more. But I certainly wouldn't be without growing this variety in my yard. This is fully in the ground. It's a beautiful tree. Take a look at it. It's gorgeous. Okay. Um, mm. Wow, that was really sweet and delicious. 
Mmm. But I stick to my premise. Oh, that was good. Certainly worth having. No question about it. Because of all of its other attributes, it's just a superior cultivar. And it, that one was extraordinarily tasty. That was really tasty. And, and much better than tiger, in my opinion. I'll taste another one. Look how nice. Wow. Mmm. Very good. Gorgeous. Gorgeous fig, isn't it? Certainly worth planting. And one of my favorite of the Mount Etnas along with Malta Black and a couple others that are slight variants from the mainstream Mount Etna types, Hardy Chicago types. Mmm. I'm going to bring a couple of these in the house. We're Debbie. So I think I'll cut it short right there. And I enjoyed your visit. I wanted mainly to feature today the tiger. Again, it's worth, if you have room, it's certainly worthy. It's a worthy cultivar to add to your collection. Just as a work, another LSU fig that I've featured this year for you. And pretty graphic detail. I certainly wouldn't get rid of it. I wouldn't get rid of my tiger. I wouldn't get rid of my work. They're not my favorite cultivars, but in the Northeast where I live, you, you, you just can't ignore the fact that they're pretty winter hardy and they do a good job in the ground. And so they're very valuable cultivars to add to your collection if you want a reliable tree that's going to produce for you every year and produce very decent figs, good tasting figs, and be consistent. They need to be a workhorse. If they're not a workhorse, they don't stay in my yard. Uh, I, I don't want mediocre fig trees. I don't accept mediocrity when it comes to my fig selections. And I have tried over the years, I've tried so many varieties, I've tried to whittle them down, whittle them down, get down to the very, very best, 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 and I think I've pretty much done that as far as my experiences are concerned. And the only thing that remains in my collection, really, whether they're in pots, which is a whole different subject, or in the ground, are fig trees that were reliable and productive, workhorses. Things that I can count on, one of my mottos. And this certainly is one, this Black Greek Marius. And so is the whole Hardy Chicago line. If you want to have a reliable variety in a cold zone, put them in the ground. You know, I don't prefer them in pots. You know, we get into the Violet de Bordeaux and other varieties that I prefer more. But Violet de Bordeaux in 7A I've grown it for 25 years at least, and it very often does not get ripe in time uh, before the leftover hurricanes and cold weather, chilling nights of September. I, 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 just, I just don't recommend it anymore, and I've removed all of my Violet de Bordeaux from ground. Uh, in a pot, I've got videos, you can look at them. and. Uh, they they flourish and they are a higher tier in taste than the hardy Chicago types no question about that okay whether it's um, Violet de Bordeaux or other strains of Violet de Bordeaux I can guarantee you that they taste better a little better but again they're late so is there any such thing as a perfect fig? I, I don't think so. Maybe if you live in California, there is. Maybe if you live in Arizona or some other high zone, maybe there is a perfect fig. But uh, for me here in 7A, I take what I can get, and what I have in my collection is worth having in my collection. So I hope I've passed on a few valuable points today. I hope. 
Never be discouraged. Don't be uh, drawn into the craze. And don't be purchasing too many fig varieties. Try to stick with the winners. It's the best advice I can give you. Try to avoid the prima donna figs. I've got a, a video out there avoiding fig pies in the sky. <laughs> and it talks about this subject. A subject that I feel very, very adamantly about. Uh, so I, I think too many, especially the new people that get into the hobby, they get too taken uh, into this whole craze uh, to collect more and more and more varieties. Uh, don't do it. Because if you can do it if you live in the right zones and if you have the space, but if, if you don't live in the right zones, hold on a second here, open this one up too. This one's going right to Debbie. If you don't have the, the space that you need or extra space for extra varieties, and if you live in a, in a colder zone, then stick to the proven varieties uh, that you can count on. Thank you very much. Enjoyed your visit. Good day.